I used to be a sex addict, so I checked myself into a marriage. <laughs> Appreciate it. My wife, the first time, stepped to my place. She threw away all my sheets, and I'm like, why? She's like, I'm not sleeping in the same place you had sex with other women. I'm like, well, you're going to buy me a new car, too. <laughs> and a dryer. Um, and a cat tree. She texted me, my wife. She's like, I thought about you today while I use my vibrator. And I'm like, really? Why? She's like, it stopped working. She's like, you never do what I want to do. I'm like, all right, tomorrow night we'll stay home and complain about me. <laughs> but I've learned you can't judge people. Like, I was actually driving uh, here, and, uh, and this like, guy with tattoos all over his face, tough looking guy, kept honking at me. I'm like, great, this guy wants to fight, right? Pulls up next to me, he's like, yo, homie, you got your daughter's iPod on top of your car. And I'm like, man, I feel really stupid judging this guy. And he goes, give it to me. <laughs> so we put our current residence, there was 147 sexual predators in a one block radius. I was like, baby, we gotta leave this church. <laughs> My wife the other day, she's like, uh, she said she wanted to spice things up in the bedroom. She goes, do you wanna bring home another woman? And I'm like, baby, you satisfy me enough. She goes, who gives a fuck about you? I don't know, it's a crazy woke time right now. It's nuts, like I was looking at uh, Victoria's Secret, right? And they had their first model who has Down syndrome, right? And part of me is like, that's great, right? But then I'm like, when I used to masturbate to Victoria's Secret and I felt guilty before. Can you imagine now, like you're fucking, you're masturbating and then you get to that page. Like, what do you do? Like, I'm like, you wanna include her, yeah, you don't want, you don't want. I used to date a Russian girl, but it didn't work. She kept invading my space. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Some of you, that one, that one we like, that one we like. I had sex with a Native American girl, and she gave me an orgasm and then tried to take it back. <laughs> is, it, is it too soon for that joke? I don't wanna, I don't wanna ruffle any feathers. Um, <laughs> you guys are fun. Who are you texting? He's not coming. Okay, but I'm saying. <laughs> I went to a rap concert. This guy thought I was an undercover cop, but I'm like, I'm not a cop. Look, I have drugs. <laughs> Turns out he was a cop. <laughs> I actually found my wife on Tinder, uh, which sucks, we're already married. <laughs> I met a girl off Tinder who looked nothing like her profile pic. She's like, what do you want to do? I'm like, find the girl in the photo. <laughs> but I would never cheat on my wife because it would break her heart to see me that happy. But she was convinced I was cheating because she gave me a blowjob and a lot of sperm didn't come out. She's like, how come a lot of sperm didn't come out? I'm like, I don't know, maybe they got bored of your stories and fell asleep, you know? She's like, I'm gonna Google it, but I wanna gargle it first. <laughs> One time I was four seconds in bed, it was like embarrassing. I had to pretend I didn't come and just keep going, but my, my dick was like broken, you know how it gets. Eventually I was like, ugh, I ended up faking an orgasm I already had. And I pulled out and the condom wasn't even on me. It was hanging out of her. I had to whip it out. It made that horrible queef noise. Like, poof, you know, I, felt, I felt like I was starting a lawnmower. Like, it turns out the girl was a circus clown. It was a red one attached to a blue one and a yellow one. And, oh, she's laughing and some of you are, are fucking embarrassed. And how did you get here? Is this part of your parole or something? How the fuck did you? Everyone here looks like they should be here except for fucking you two. I had a threesome one time, but it was the wrong ratio. It was me, a dude, a dude. <laughs> Here they are, Scuba Steve. How's it going, buddy? Nice to see you. You usually sit over there. What happened? You got demoted? People watching on the internet, there's so much weed smoke in the air. I feel like I'm in, I feel like I'm in fucking Stranger Things season four. It is thick right now. I'm blowing clouds like 11, Demogorgon. What the fuck is going on right now? I have no idea where I am. There's all kinds of monitors and shit. Woo, contact tie. Bad day to have a drug test in the morning, am I right? <laughs> I don't have a drug test in the morning. You know what I do have, this is true, uh, in the morning, uh, my birthday is tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, that makes me a Gemini. I don't like telling people I'm a Gemini, especially chicks, because whenever I tell a chick I'm a Gemini, I always get the same reaction. Oh no, uh-uh. <laughs> No. No, you fucking can't trust Geminis. They're seriously bipolar. There's no X hundred twins. They're fucking bipolar. Fucking no. Because my zodiac sign is a twins. That's a little unfair, right? I gotta be bipolar because my parents like to fuck in the fall. 
It's a beautiful time of year in New England. The leaves are changing and John and Marianne wanted to get on. You know what I'm saying? It's not my fault. It's not fair at all, man. And that's the only zodiac sign that gets such a shit reputation. How come no one says anything about cancers? They're literally cancer. <laughs> oh, I love driving while I'm high. Mm, that's the fucking, yeah, I'll fucking, I'll fucking drive high. I got seat warmers and a subwoofer. Yeah, I'm fucking driving high. <laughs> Kidding me? I'm in the music, goddammit, my ass is warm. <laughs> and I'm not a danger to anyone on the road, okay? When I'm driving high. Do not worry, all right? I am not the motherfucker in the far left lane doing 90. Bew, bew, that ain't me. I'm the dude in the far right lane doing 45 on cruise control behind the bread truck listening to techno on Pandora, all right? That's me. That's me. You're gonna be fine, all right? The only danger I pose is maybe to my data plan. You're gonna be all right. I'm the, I'm, when I'm fucking high, I'm the best driver ever because I just, I want to just seem like I'm totally fucking normal. I'm like, nothing to see here, citizen, going the speed limit, being a good citizen on the road, don't stand out at all, be like everyone, draw no attention to yourself, and I'm still in my driveway. Okay, okay, good, good. That was a warm-up. 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 I'm addicted to watching news and I'm addicted to watching porn. I can't stop. I can't stop. I can't stop watching news and then porn and then news and then porn because I just love watching people get fucked. It's the same thing. Kind of new. You guys look kind of lit and fucking cool. And I know that we're near like Huntington kind of, so I'm a little bit nervous because I got to talk about being a homo. It's tough. I don't think anybody can understand it because I'm also an incredibly manly man who fucks women in the vagina. <laughs> From time to time, I suck a dick. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> so, when I fuck dudes, you know what I mean? I'm the dude still. I rank as the guy. But all these dudes I've been fucking, they look like they're having a really good time. I'm like, how does this get fucked thing work? You know, I w maybe I want to get butt fucked. <laughs> so I asked my wife, <laughs> hey, babe, I'm thinking about getting butt fucked. How do you do that? Because she's pretty gay. I mean, for a girl, I don't know. It's hard to explain. She likes gay guys. I think that's how I got in there. Um, but she goes, yeah, yeah, you gotta learn how to wash your butt out. And I was like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Because I definitely, I, now I get, I don't want poo on me, I'm not into that. <laughs> so she goes, uh, yeah, you can get this thing. First we worked on it with a Xanax and uh, a, a glass of wine and a pinky finger for like two days. <laughs> there was a couple of times I was like, how far, how many fingers? She's like, I haven't got half a pinky in yet. I'm like, fuck. Relax, Jason, relax, let it happen. Because I got told you gotta relax and let it happen. It wasn't happening. I blame my manly insecure shit, you know what I mean? Like I'm so pretending to be tough my whole life that my anus hole is just like, uh-uh. You got the wrong guy. Turns out you got the right guy, I'm fucking gay as fuck. <laughs> Did a bunch of girls just cheer for that? That's weird. So anyway, she goes, you can get this squirty bottle thing and you put the squirty bottle up your ass and squeeze water up. But she says what you really want to do to make it easier is you get the shower mount and it's like a metal, little metal dick attached to the shower and you fucking pop that up there and Bob is your uncle. You are clean. <laughs> so I go into the spare bathroom. <laughs> this guy's like, is he serious? <laughs> I am. I fucking... Fight and suck cock. <laughs> Knocked a guy out that night. Ooh, full homo. The hardest thing about being gay is making out with dudes. The shit's so gay. Still find that difficult. But they get bummed out if you don't do that, you know? They suck you off and then they try to, you're like, Ugh. they're like, what the fuck? I'm like, man, it's so gay. I'm like, you realize you're naked. 
with a guy, I'm like, yeah, it's just different. So when I'm getting, getting back to my ass getting washed out, I go to the spare bathroom and my wife, we, her and I, we don't poo in front of each other. I like it that way. So we don't do that. I fart, but I try not to. So not, I, she's definitely not seen my poo. So I get this shower hose thing. She goes, put it up. And I'm like, oh, it feels weird. She's like, just relax, let it happen, whatever this fucking shit is. So I'm like, okay, relax. And I'm like, okay, it's in my butt, it's in. She's like, okay, now turn the shower on. I'm like, I turn the shower on. She's like, you're going to feel your stomach filling up. And I was like, I feel it filling up. And then right there, right when I said, I feel it filling up, it, I shot a turd out of my ass. And it just went, shudunk. And I was like, am I in trouble? I got the worst luck with it, like shit. Like I got anybody else caught COVID? I caught COVID last year. I got fucked up with COVID. Like it, it was right before I took any shots or anything. So I got. I thought I was gonna fucking die. For three weeks, I was sick as fuck. So like the second week, where I thought, okay, this is it. I'm not. I'm not gonna make it. I grab. This is a true story. I grabbed my phone. I started deleting shit. I'm like, my family can't see any of this shit. <laughs> I'm like, oh, they can't see that. That's for sure. That's oh, fuck that. I'm like, I mean, I, 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 I got rid of like, I got rid of fucking a, a threesome I did on my birthday. I videotaped the whole thing because I'm a director, so I had like three cameras. It was fucking, it was good. I edited it and everything, <laughs> and I got rid of that because I'm like, fuck. And, and now I feel bad because I'm alive, and I'm like, oh, how are my kids gonna know I'm cool when they grow up? You know what I mean? It's just, I did it for them, and. <laughs> But yeah, it fucking sucks. I was throwing fucking hard drives in the microwave, like in the Matrix. <laughs> out of all the Chinese people in the world, out of all the Chinese people in the world, my favorite Chinese people are the Koreans. Because there's all kinds of Chinese people, right? Vietnamese, Filipinos, there. Don't be racist, there's all kinds of Chinese people. But <laughs> you know that totally something Trump would have said, you know that, right? He's like, I love the Koreans, they're my favorite Chinese people. I love their language. They speak the Cheech and the Chong. I love sushi, it's my favorite food. I love my favorite Chinese food, I love sushi. And windmills cause cats are. Anyway, uh, when comedians, are, I don't know all comedians, but at least me, when I, when I write a joke, I usually take the truth and I exaggerate it to make it funnier, right? But this next story I'm about to tell you happened word for word. When I first moved to LA from New York, the lady that used to cut my hair was Korean. Nice lady, in broken English, she's from the motherland, San Gabriel. And um, every time she would cut my hair, she would always ask me the same question. She's like, do you want facial? Do you want facial? I'm like, no, mama, so I'm here for a haircut. I don't need a facial, right? But one day I'm doing a television show, and at the time, it's the second TV show I've ever been on. So I'm real scared. I'm really nervous. I go to you, and I want to look good. So I go get my hair cut. She cuts my hair. She's like, do you want facial? I'm like, you know what? Yes. I always say no, but tonight I'm going to be on TV. I'm really nervous. I just want to look good. Whatever you can do, help me out. So she brings me in the back room. She lays me down on the table. She puts these oils and creams on my face. And she wraps my face in a hot towel. My face starts to tingle. I'm like, man, this facial shit's dope. She starts massaging my shoulders. I'm like, holy shit, I should have done this before. All of a sudden, she unzips my pants. She takes my chorizo out. That's cock for all the white people that are here. I only tell you that because I don't want you to order the wrong thing at a Mexican restaurant. You know? You don't want Carlos to come out of the kitchen going, it's not in the menu, but okay. <laughs> so, so she takes it out, she pours oil on it and starts to stroke it. The reason I'm sharing this weird, awkward story with you guys is she sings in Korean while she's doing it. <laughs> she's like, she I'm thinking, what do I do? I mean, do I come before the song's over or after the song? <laughs> I didn't know Jason then. He couldn't have told me, but the thing... <laughs> but, you know, I'm like, I don't know the rest of the words. I'm like, I don't want to come too fast. She's got like a whole other chorus to go. You know, I'm like, remix. <laughs> you ever seen a woman so perfect, so beautiful? Did you want to go home and punch your wife in the fucking face? You ever did? <laughs> it's like, oh, what was that for? Like, don't even talk to me. I'm so mad at you right now. I'm so mad at you. God 
damn, I should have waited. <laughs> I'm not gay. My best, this is a true story. My best friend in high school was gay. His, uh, I wasn't going to talk about it, but his name was Victor the Fag. It wasn't his real last name. But, <laughs> <laughs> but we were all like 16, 17, right? That's what everybody called him. This is back in New York in the Bronx. And uh, the, way, the way I met him was I used to like this girl named Yvette Harper. Little Jewish girl, big titties, right? She was really nice. And um, he would always sit with her. And I was like, I was fucking just all into her, man. And then one day, these two assholes from a football team or something came and started fucking with Victor, right? And I was, I was a boxer, but I was a professional boxer, but I was an amateur boxer when I was a kid. And um, so I'm like, oh, this is my fucking, I'm gonna go help him, you know, fucking save the day. And then me, me and the girl hook up. But instead, me and Victor became girlfriends. I don't know how the fuck that happened. But I, I fell in love with Victor. He was a fucking great. He just made me laugh, and I always had a good sense of humor, and Victor was just hilarious. So after high school, though, I never I didn't talk to Victor anymore. We, you know, there was no Facebook or nothing. So one day I'm doing, years later, I'm doing a show in Chicago, and guess who I see at the airport? I'm like, oh, fuck, Victor the fag, what's up? <laughs> he goes, no, no, I'm not gay no more, I quit. I'm like, get the fuck out of here, bro. You can't, you can't quit, what are you, what are you get a sperm patch? How the fuck did you quit? <laughs> what are you, are you chewing dickoderm, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm like, dude, you're born gay, man. We had this conversation, remember? <laughs> he's like, <laughs> then he's like, you know, if you don't know anybody here in Chicago, you can spend the night at my house. I'm like, no, it's okay, bro. I got, I got a hotel, man. Sorry. He goes, don't worry, nothing will happen. I'm like, bullshit. I use that same line too, fucker. I know how that works. And massage my feet and work your way up to my wables. I know the whole thing. He's like, you got me, fairy dust. I'm like, oh fuck. <laughs> Damn it, Victor, you got me again. One time I'm working in Vegas, right? You guys may not know this, but when a comedian works in Vegas, some casinos make you literally work from Monday through Sunday, seven days a week, three shows every single night. That's a lot of work. I mean, if you're a construction worker, that ain't shit, but like for me, that's like a lot of work, right? <laughs> so she calls me up on a Friday, Saturday. I'm still hungover from Monday, right? It's like two, three in the morning. I don't even know what time it is. She's like, what are you doing? I'm like, nothing. I'm just trying to go to bed, man. She's like, no, you're not. What do you think I'm doing? I know what you're doing. You're laying naked in bed. You're waiting for two whores to come over. They're going to strip their clothes off. One's going to sit in your face. The other's going to sit in your crotch. Then they're going to switch and take turns. She hung up on me. I'm fucking so mad. I called her back. I'm like, tell me the rest of the story. What else are they going to do? Look, this is... God damn, I'm awake now. I'm awake. What? 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 I feel small. I know I am, but I don't feel it. I feel like everything's well proportioned. You know, I got a good proportion. Like, if I'm alone in a photo, just me, you'd be like, yeah, it's like... That's a fucking good-sized fellow right there, right? Well, that might be an NFL running back. We don't know. But then if you put, like, a football right here, you'd be like, oh, fuck, he's not... Shit, that's disappointing. He's not... His waist isn't even the diameter of that damn football. It's, uh, more like a ball boy, I think, is what's going on. Yeah, he's trying to feel good. You know what's fucked up when you're small, though? People feel like they can tell you in public, like, no problem. Yeah, there's no stigma to this. We've all agreed that we ain't going to say shit about the oversized people, correct? Well, that hasn't trickled down to the small people. Yeah, people feel like they can just say you are in public. No problem, no shame. Yeah, I can't tell you how many times I've met somebody for the first time, go in for the hug, and then afterward they go, oh my God, you're so little. <laughs> what is this tiny? Look at this guy. What do you do? What do you work at Disney? What do you do? <laughs> Look at you, you little guy. I'm never going to take you seriously ever. <laughs> How could I? What are you, a buck 20? How could I take you seriously? <laughs> they offer piggybacks and shit. That's rude. <laughs> For a stranger to offer a piggyback is fucking rude. <sighs> yeah, no one says anything about the oversized people, but me, it's open season. I, I'll tell you this, I was getting, it's a true story. I was getting a massage once in Koreatown, and in the middle of the massage, the woman goes, oh, you small body. And you know how difficult it is to maintain an erection when someone says that? <laughs> Did you know that the employees at Trader Joe's are all on drugs? <laughs> you didn't know that, did you? Very fucked up people. <laughs> you didn't know that. Come on, you didn't know that? You ever seen anybody so happy to be working at a grocery store? Fuck! <laughs> anybody so pleased to be stacking kumquats? How? <laughs> are you having such a good time? Because they're fucked up. You seen the shirts they're wearing? What the hell? They go to their job dressed like they don't have a job. Trader Joe's. 
fucked up. Even Joe's on acid. Have you seen those products? <laughs> Fucking watermelon gravy. What? <laughs> Who comes up with these things? Brussels sprout jerky. You're fucked up, Joe. <laughs> You're high. Something. I don't know. They're so fucking high. They always want to talk to you and shit, ask to be in their band. Stop it. I'm just there to buy some asparagus. I'm not trying to make friends. Oh, they talk to me all the time. How was your night? Me? <laughs> How was my night? Uh, pretty, pretty good. Well, yeah. oh, cool. What did you do? <laughs> what did I do? Uh, I, went, I, went, I, I went to karaoke. You think it's going to end? No, no, no. What, what song did you sing? Fuck. What song did I sing? I sang Poison by Belle Biv DeVoe. What's it to you? You don't get that shit at Ralph's, right? They just grunt at you. Like, Paper and plastic. I like that. Paper and plastic. I don't care. I don't care. Fuck me. Fuck you. I don't want to make a friend. I just want to buy my shit and leave. Trader Joe's wants to be in your life. Because her pubes are like wrapping around my shaft and they're like trying to go in my meters. Felt like it was some sort of like the Kraken trying to pull down my cock submarine. <laughs> so the only way to like get out of this was to inflate the tubes, you know? So the fucking boner comes up and I'm like, fuck. Because people know unless you've got a micro penis, if you've got a hard on in public, you put it in the top of your pants and zip it up and you just stand like Donald Trump. 